The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. The good news is that the bad news is wrong. Life is not designed to be woe and grief, cruelty and hate, but to be truth and beauty and goodness, faith, hope and love, the love of God and the love of others. Dr. Joseph Clark, one of the first physicians to go to the old Belgian Congo, one time entered a village where he hoped to spend the night. He'd traveled all day over the mountains. He was utterly exhausted, but the chief of this village told him that he couldn't stay overnight. So Dr. Clark sat down on a log to rest for a few minutes, and without thinking to amuse himself, he picked up a stick, and he threw it to his collie dog to go retrieve it. Well, this stick fell near a large group of women who were watching him in the village. The dog rushed over to get the stick. The women saw the dog coming, scattered left and right, shouting in terror. The men of the village at this laughed hilariously, and in that moment their hostility ceased, and later a hospital was built in that village. The Navajo Indians say that God's first gift to humankind was laughter, and said, Jesus, be of good cheer. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I've come that my joy might be in you, that your joy might be complete. Live fearlessly, he said, fear not, be not anxious. The burdens you fear are heavier than the burdens you bear, worrying about the future, grieving over it, being filled with anxiety and nervousness, tension and dread over the future, is probably far worse than whatever the future actually does hold. You may not know what the future holds, but you know who holds the future. God does. God loves you. God will set you on the right path. It's better to go limping up the right road than go running down the wrong one. But many there are who have fallen from the place where you now stand. Trust not to your own righteousness, but have faith in God, the love of God, the forgiveness of God, the renewal of God, which can begin renewing your life, your mind, your soul, your heart. This very split second of time and eternity, if you will in this moment make the choice to do the will of God, give your life to the God who gave you your life originally. That is real goodness. True morality is the fruit of the Spirit. To desire morality without spirituality is to want apples without apple trees. Don't expect God to put you in a bigger position until you begin to fill the one you're in right now. But whatever your position may be, God can stimulate and inspire you and stabilize you and strengthen you right where you are this moment in your life. A spiritually small person can make even a big job seem to shrink to littleness. But a spiritually big person can make even what seems to be a small job into a bigger important one. Count the days lost in which you've not tried to do something good for others, something for the kingdom of God, the building of it. It is better to say, this one thing I do, than to say, this 40 or 50 things I dabble around in without accomplishing any of them. But if you cannot do the good you would, at least do the good you can. Everybody's limited in time, energy, talent, ability. Give what you have to God. It isn't just what you know, but what you sow. The seed you sow, which does good in this world, even after you're dead on this earth. Your grand business is not so much to see what lies dimly in the distance, but to do what lies clearly at hand this moment. And God, right where you are, has something for you to do, something at hand for you this moment to begin. Back in the 1800s, the English used to say, time is for employment, eternity is for enjoyment. And yet you will enjoy the passing moments of life if you've given them to God and are living them spiritually. It is a great thing to do even a little thing well. But without prayer, no undertaking is really well done. Expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. Give all you have and are to God. There is nothing too small to do well if you do it for God. But there are no gains without pains. My old grandfather used to say, Plow deep while sluggards sleep. Be about your business. Get active with something in your life. doesn't matter how young or how old you are. God can use your life if you'll give your life to God to be used. 
then work with other people. Three people helping each other are as good as six people who are not helping each other. Pray till tears come, work till sweat comes, and worship till the joy comes. Because this is a happy life. It's a glad way to live, living in love for God and living in love for people. You're loving personalities. You're caring about them. These are the creations of God. Every person on your block and around this planet, around this world, is a brother or sister, young or old, whatever the color, racial background, culture, language, that person is a brother or sister. This is intended to be a family, this whole planet, of love. Doesn't that sound right? Wouldn't that feel right? Wouldn't that be better than trying to blow each other up every few years and endless enmity and strife, man's inhumanity to man, as my father used to say, and wars and rumors of wars, as the master put it? Isn't there a better way to live than that? Don't you long for something more than that, something better, beating your swords into plowshares, your spears into pruning hooks, that the nation shall not learn the ways of war anymore, but live in peace on earth and goodwill to humankind? You can have your part in that if you'll believe that you can have a part in it. Between the great things that you cannot do because you're not able and the little things that you feel that you're above doing and that they're below your dignity to do, there's a danger you'll end up doing nothing at all. Be willing to do what God leads you to do. The debts you owe to God are payable to people on this earth. When duty calls, some people are just never there. They don't answer the door or the phone. But there's one thing more, and this is difficult to say and difficult to hear, but it's true. You have to be willing in doing the will of God, even to look ridiculous, even to be ridiculed. Paul writes in the New Testament, you have to be willing to be a fool for God's sake, a fool to look that way to people when you're pursuing the will of God, because many times it will look like foolishness. It's in the book. It's in the teaching, and it is true. They called Jesus a fool. They said he was beside himself. They said he was a madman, his own brothers and sisters, some of them at least, made that dour diagnosis of the master that he is crazy, they were saying. Or he's possessed of a devil. They even said he's the prince of devils. Here was the greatest, if you want to understate the case, the greatest good man who ever lived on this earth. And they end up saying he's crazy, that he is doing all these amazing things by the power of evil or his being in league with the source of evil. Here was the Son of God, the living Son of the living God, the most influential personality to live through human history. We date our calendars from his birth, and yet people of his own generation had the unmitigated audacity to look at this life, this life of selfless, giving, caring, love, this godly life, and say, well, this person must be insane or not right somehow, can't be true. Is it any wonder that the Apostle Paul wrote, you have to be willing to be a fool for God, to look foolish, to be ridiculed, to be insulted, to be mocked. Jesus said, blessed are you, or happy, happy are you when men revile you and persecute you. Reviling means throwing verbal barbs, writing things about you, saying things about you, putting you down, disrespecting you. Blessed are you, happy are you, and that's the translation of the word blessed. When men shall revile you and persecute you and shall speak all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. God has something for you to do this moment. If you'll have the courage to do it, get your tools ready, God will find you work. I said get your tools ready, God will find you work. God has something for you to do in this life. Service is nothing more nor less than love in its work clothes. You're going to have all eternity to celebrate your spiritual victories, but you only have a few hours before sunset to win those victories here on this earth, here on the planet where you were born. What a satisfaction to make a difference for the kingdom of God on this earth where you began it all. Though you live for all eternity throughout the starry realms, you can make a difference here where you began, on this earth, in your hometown, on your home planet. The work some unknown good man or woman has done may have been years ago. It's like a vein of water flowing hidden underground, secretly making the earth green, and yet a person may not know its source. So you can be a force for good on this earth. Train your eye to watch for people's needs, to read other people's woes. Train your soul to service, your hand to helpfulness. That person is of most use to the world who gives himself or herself most freely to God for the uses of God. The life of Jesus was just such a life as that. 
He was mocked, he was ridiculed, yet he never gave up his life mission, his commitment of his life to God. There were still other criticisms made of the master in his own time and generation. They called him a drunkard. They declared that he was a glutton and a wine-bibber, that he was a friend of publicans and sinners, that he was sacrilegious, that he didn't keep the Sabbath, that he failed in the rituals and the formal observances expected of a good Jewish man of his time. They said he was nobody special. He came from over in Nazareth. People knew his family. Who did he think that he was anyway talking this way and doing these things? They accused him of being a heretic. They accused him of teaching false doctrines. They said he was a false prophet. Some people think it makes them taller if they make you stand in a hole. But never mud wrestle with a pig. You both get dirty and the pig actually enjoys it. Some people will believe anything if you whisper it to them. So they whispered about Jesus. There was a campaign. And before long they were shouting about Jesus. They didn't want to hear what he had to say. And so the day came at last when they put him to death. It was an ancient custom among some peoples when a messenger brought troublesome news to turn around and kill the messenger. That is an historic fact. Some people don't realize it, but it's true. And so that's what they did to Jesus. They put him to death in as prolonged and painful a process as the maniacal mind of man has ever conceived, death by crucifixion. But they learned something that day or within a few days after. They learned something never ever to be forgotten. They learned you can't kill truth. You cannot assassinate goodness and love. You cannot destroy the mercy and forgiveness of God. That love reaches out to you wherever you're hearing this broadcast. That love of God reaches out to you this very moment. They couldn't kill it and neither can you. You can reject it, but you cannot destroy it. So accept it, because God loves you, and you can begin to live in faith and hope and love, and life will begin to feel right for you. You can live victoriously. God has a purpose for you. The quality of your greatness may depend upon what you do with that which is the very least, so you think, in your life. Whatever it is, give it all to God. Give it all to God. What do you want with it anyway? <laughs> it was all given to you. It was all given to you by God. Everything, the breath in your nostrils, the sky overhead, the heart beat under your breastbone, the pulse at your wrist, your very life itself, the hairs on your head to your toenails, it's all a gift of God. Give it back to God. Give it to God this moment. And God will make something of your life that you couldn't make of your life by yourself. And it'll be the greatest satisfaction you've ever had in all your existence. It can begin for you this moment. Make that decision. And then we want to hear about it. For decade after decade, we've been doing this broadcast, heard around the world by satellite and shortwave. If you're listening, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. Hope it's been of assistance to you spiritually, helped you with a spiritual life. And for free literature, just write to us, the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI. Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. I've written things on prayer, worship, finding God, getting to know God, life after death, growing spiritually. These are the most important issues of your life, whether you've ever thought about it or not. These are the most important things. We want to send this literature to you. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the address. It's Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.